What's up guys, as you can probably tell, this video is going to be a little bit different. Today we're going to be installing the memory and the solid state drive into the new MacBook Pro. This actually still has the plastic on it, I haven't unwrapped it yet. I'm going to swap the hardware out before I even boot it up for the first time. And I thought it'd be cool to share this process uh, with you guys in case you ever need to do it yourself. There's a lot of good videos online about doing this. Other World Computing, where I got this memory from, has some great installation videos for all the products, and that's actually what I use to learn how to do this. So I actually have the parts of the toolkit right here. We're gonna need this pry tool. I think this is a Phillips double zero screwdriver, and we may need this Torx screwdriver. I can't remember, honestly, but we will find out once we're inside the computer. So, I've got some anti-static bubble wrap here. I have it left over from when I moved a lot of electronics here. It's very important that you don't have any static electricity on you. You really should be grounded when you do this. I'm being a little less cautious, uh, but you don't want to damage the computer when you do this. So let's get started, I guess. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna take off the plastic. Oh man. Okay. We'll just throw that aside. There it is. Oh man, I don't want to get too many fingerprints on it. There we go. Brand new, right out of the box. Never booted up, so hopefully we don't break it. Now we're going to start by removing the top three screws up here. Now these screws are going to be longer than the rest of them. And we have a little tray, our solid state tray that we're gonna to use to place the screws in. Now you might have to apply some pressure when you're taking these out. You do not want to strip these. I repeat, you do not want to strip these screws. So make sure you're using the right size screwdriver. Make sure you're pushing down enough, not too hard, but make sure that the screw's actually turning and you're not just destroying the head of the screw because you will have a very bad time if you strip the screw. Okay, we've got all the screws out of the bottom of the computer. Also make sure that you don't scratch the computer. And then you're just gonna lift up gently from the top here, and the bottom will come off. And there it is. There's the internals of your MacBook. So right here is the memory, there's the hard drive, and here's the battery. Now whenever you're screwing around in here, and also there's the CD drive if you care about it, Whenever you're screwing around in here, always make sure to disconnect the battery. So this is what we're gonna use our pry tool for. We're just gonna gently pry up on the corners of the battery connector until it comes loose. And we're just gonna pop it off like that. There you go. So there's no power in any of this stuff. Now, I think we're gonna do the memory first because it's a little bit easier. There's these little tabs right here. You just pull to the side. The first stick of memory will pop out. You pull it out, set it aside. Make sure you don't apply any static electricity to the memory as well, because you might want to save that for if you go back to the Apple Store. Just pull up on the tabs again, gently remove the memory, place it aside. Now we're going to open up our new memory. Take my scissors here, just cut this open. Make sure also you don't drop anything into the computer, obviously, because that would be bad. Okay, so we got our two memory modules right here. Two eight gig sticks for a total of 16 gigabytes. Pop these out one at a time. You also probably don't want to touch the connectors. Now, this little notch right here in the memory, right there, you gotta make sure that lines up with the notch in the slot. So you just gently push the memory in so it sits in, and then you push down until you get a little click and it'll sit in there. So just repeat for the second memory module. Push it all the way in, make sure the connectors are touching, push it down, a nice little click, and there we go, that's it. We've just quadru doubled or quadrupled the memory in the system. These are, I think these might be, oh, these are two gig sticks. So we just went from four gigabytes to 16 gigabytes, quadrupled memory, very simple. The hard drive's a little bit more in depth. There's a retainer bar that you have to remove above it with two screws that are actually attached to the retainer bar. You don't actually pull them out. So you just loosen these two screws and you just gently lift the retainer bar out, set that aside. And then there's a pull tab 
that you can use to lift the drive from its bay. Now don't pull hard because there's a SATA connector right here that you have to remove. You're just gonna gently pull on the connector and there you go, hard drive comes out. Now, the reason, I remember this now, that you need the Torx screwdriver is these four mounting screws on the side of the drive are Torx something. And this kit includes the little screwdriver. I could include the info in the description down below actually on the specific screwdriver you need to remove these. But you need to transfer these mounting screws to your new hard drive or in my case, your new solid state drive. And you want to remove the plastic pull tab. It's just glued on there. You can, there should be enough adhesive left to remove it. So we're just gonna quickly take these Torx screws off of the old drive and this is the wrong screwdriver. Well, once you have the correct screwdriver, I believe these are T6 screws, then you can start to remove, please work, please work. Yes, then you can start to remove the mounting screws from the old drive and then place them on the new drive. So as we remove them from the old hard drive, I'm just gonna screw them into the solid state one at a time. So there are all of the mounting screws. This is a 500 gigabyte hard drive and I know yesterday's video I had a 250 gigabyte solid state but I actually decided to put a one terabyte solid state in just because I don't want to do this again if I need more space on the computer. I was going to put the one terabyte in my desktop but I'll just get another one terabyte for the desktop sometime in the future. And the last thing you're going to want to do though is the pull tab. Remember how we were easily able to lift this hard drive out of the slot? You definitely want to transfer this pull tab to the new drive. It'll make your life a lot easier if you ever have to do this again. So just take the time. It goes right here on the top. The SATA connector should be facing that way. Just make sure you put it in the right place. We'll just reapply this right here. And there we go. So now we can simply place the drive back in the slot. These two screws line up in these holes. We're gonna, but for before we do that, we're gonna reattach the SATA connector. There we go. Make sure it's connected nice and tight. We're gonna put those in their respective areas. We're gonna seat this in here. Then you just take the retainer bar, place it on top of the drive, tighten down the screws. And that is it. Just reconnect the battery connector. And now we just have to put the bottom case back on. See, it wasn't too bad. Memory, hard drive. Didn't even take 15 minutes. I believe you want to start with the longer screws. Once the screws are back in, flip the laptop over and hope that when you hit the power button, it chimes. Oh, look at that, so I never built this one before. Let's see if it boots. There we go. Now the SSD is blank, so it's not gonna do anything, but that's what you wanna see. If you get a black screen, beeping, something else, go back, recheck your work, make sure you're using the right type of memory, but that is how you install memory and a hard drive or solid state drive in the mid-2012 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now, since there's no operating system on the computer, you're gonna get this nice blinking folder icon. Um, I actually have a Mac OS X, or just OS X El Capitan installer, or Mac OS, whatever it's called these days, on this flash drive. So I'm just gonna plug this in, and we may need to restart the computer, or it might just uh, boot from it, we'll see. Well, since it's past one in the morning and I can't get an install flash drive created that actually boots, we're just gonna install Yosemite from this external hard drive and then upgrade the computer, which is kind of irritating, but I guess there's some bug or something. I tried creating installer flash drives from Yosemite, from El Capitan on my other laptop, and I've done it about five times now and none of them boot. So we're gonna just go with what works because I wanna get this thing and set up so I can go to sleep. Now what I think is funny is something I probably should have mentioned in my other video is that you get a MagSafe port with these laptops. The new current MacBooks don't have MagSafe USB ports or standard USB ports. All they have is USB 
seaports. And I, personally, I think it should have included at least a MagSafe port so that when you trip on the cable, it doesn't yank the computer to the ground. And also for security reasons, because if you're plugging your laptop in at like airports or just some untrusted location, you're now plugging in a cable that can also carry data to your computer, which is probably not the best thing. But let's get this thing plugged in. So we're just formatting the solid state we put in so that we can install OS 10 on it. There we go, now it shows up. Can we customize anything? Eh, not really much there. Okay, well, there we go. OS 10 includes a built in screen reader called VoiceOver. If you know how to use VoiceOver, press Command F5 now to turn it on and set up your Mac. If you would like to learn how to use VoiceOver to set up your Mac, press the escape key. And that's VoiceOver. But as you can see, the computer's booted, so I'm gonna go and set this up with all of my accounts and apps and all that other stuff. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, give it a thumbs up down below, subscribe to the channel, and let me know if you like these kind of videos. Maybe I'll do more of them, and I will see you guys later. Peace out.